like to thank you all for joining us today. And uh, now with that, I would like to take you to uh, how we're go going to spend uh, the whole program today. Um, so after this, uh, we will hear from Mr. Prem Singh Taru on introduction to climate change or climate crisis. And that will be followed by another presentation on indigenous knowledge and practices on climate change adaptation by Ms. Pirawan Wangniti Satapurn. And after that, we're gonna hear from Mr. Lakpanuri Sherpa and Maithi Yumon uh, on climate change discussions and processes and dis indigenous people's engagement. And after that, we are going to have uh, an answer session for the questions that you have. So for that session, I would like to request everyone, if you have questions, please send uh, to us in, in the chat box, uh, please. And then we will collect your questions. And then uh, at the answer session, the speakers, the relevant speakers will answer uh, your questions. And that will be followed by an introduction to Asia Indigenous Youth Platform, which was newly established under the leadership of Asia Indigenous Peoples Pact. And that will be followed by a very important session for all of us, a uh, breakout group session where each and every one of uh, all the participants will get a chance to uh, discuss your opinions. We will spend 40 minutes for that and that will be followed by a group sharing session and then we will go to the closing session where how these inputs that you share during this session will be uh, carried uh, after this session. So uh, with this, I would like to invite Mr. Prem Singh Taru, Environment Program Officer of AIPP uh, to give a presentation. Uh, before inviting him, uh, giving the floor, I would like to introduce a bit on uh, Prem Ji. Uh, Mr. Prem Singh Taru is an advocate and anthropologist from Taru Indigenous Community of Western Nepal, having more than a decade diverse experiences on human rights fields, particularly rights on indigenous peoples, persons with disability, children, youths, education, livelihoods, peace building and conflict management, and plus five years of teaching. He's currently working with Asia Indigenous Peoples Pact, APP based in Chiang Mai as Environment Program Officer. So Premji, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Yuman. Hi everyone, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity. So yeah, I want to take the floor and want to share my screen for my presentation and uh, here for your information, I have uh, some uh, some questions that for building the understanding on climate change. So I will be sharing the link of Mentimeter, and you will have to uh, have thirty minutes, thirty seconds time to type your uh, your response. And I will have three sets of question, but in total there are seven questions. In the first set there are three questions and in in the second set there are three questions the last set uh, the last set there is one question so so we want to know how uh, we indigenous people in different country contexts have uh, understanding on climate change because because climate change sometimes in our own indigenous language is really very hard to find the exact word but but we have more and detail you know means knowledge on that but it's not as a term we use climate change so in different country contexts in different our indigenous community context we want to know what uh, is our understanding on climate change and how we understand uh, climate change so i want to start my i i want to start uh, my uh, screen share uh, and before you know going in that uh, mentimeter means uh, to share to to learn uh, understanding from all of you uh, i want to share you uh, there will be my three contents that uh, we will means i will be uh, doing uh, flowing it and the first is understanding climate change which for which i am going to use uh, multimeter uh, 
Mentimeter. The second is impact of climate change at indigenous uh, to indigenous communities, and third is adaptation and mitigation. So adaptation and mitigation will again connect with uh, with indigenous knowledge, which will be brought by our uh, another uh, colleague. So I want to go in uh, understanding climate change. So I want to share you. I want to share you the link. So please, uh, please. Please open that link and I'm going to share that link in chat box. So please open, please open that link. What are you doing? Okay. You see in the chat box. Yes, please open this link in your computer or in, in your mobile. Then you will see uh, some, then you will see a series of questions. So you have 30 seconds to vote your opinion in this question. Does your indigenous community have one word of the vocabulary, terminology and climate change? If yes, you have also space to write, you can write uh, means if the specific word or you can say yes or no also. Okay. It's nice. Seven colleagues, they have already voted in this uh, response box. Okay, colleagues, you can see uh, what uh, means you can see your voting here in the screen share. Someone has uh, typed here Batavaran Parivartan. Someone has Jal Bayu Parivartan. Yeah, so how many uh, colleagues have already responded? No, eight colleagues, okay. Okay, so let's, we go in the next question. Next, again, you have uh, another 30 seconds to vote it. Uh, you can see the question, how many seasons do you have in your, how many seasons do you have in your country, in your country, which season starts when and in when? Yes, we have already got response from one colleague, it's three seasons, three seasons, three seasons, two seasons, rainy and sun in summer, four seasons, five colleagues, Two seasons, okay, four, seven colleagues or oh, eight colleagues. Okay, I think, uh, I guess all of you are seeing my screen. So the results, whatever you 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 are uh, in, means uh, writing, it's coming in the screen. Okay, so already 12, let's go, let's go third question. So be ready for third, already 12 colleagues, they have, Okay, uh, let's go to the third question. So four seasons means in different countries, they have different seasons, two seasons, uh, uh, rainy and sun, three seasons and four seasons. Okay, let's go next. Okay, the third question is, how do you notice the changes in the seasons? Are there any changes in pattern of the seasons? How do you notice the changes in the seasons? Are there any changes in pattern of the seasons? Yes. One colleague already responded. Yes, there are. Yes, four. Three, yes, the temperature, okay. Drop, raise in temperature with temperature and rain. Good, already 10 colleagues. Okay, yes, by the change in temperature. Okay, already 12 colleagues is still typing, uh, 13 colleagues already, okay. So now I want to go in the next, means I'm going to share the next link because Mentimeter, the free use is only allowed three questions, that's the limitation. So I'm going to share another link which will have again three questions.
Just wait a few seconds. Okay, yeah, this is the link for next round of question. And let me go in presentation. Okay, the fourth question, how does your how does your community predict the weather? Oh, sorry, so, sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I have another set of questions. So sorry, I have to save the second, but it was said the last one. Okay, so, okay. But still you can vote for this. Let's, let's, uh, complete what you have already opened. So let me go back and I open uh, the last means, this is the last question actually. Yeah, there are three sets, so I copied the last one. Okay, what do, you, what do you understand by mitigation and adaptation in your context, right? This is the question. Yes, I copied this, okay. Okay, I'll do three, four. Okay, mitigation, prevention, struggle. Mitigate to reduce adapted surrounding prevention and struggle by type of action needed. Mitigation is tough. Mitigation, mitigate is reduce. Okay, 10 more seconds, then we go the last set. <laughs> Mistakely, I share the last question but anyway okay so i wait five more seconds so what do you understand by mitigation and adaptation in your contracts mitigation is controlling survival for the fittest mitigate is to reduce ghg greenhouse gas by type of action needed prevention and struggle mitigate is stop adapted to surrounding mitigate is reduced SDGs goals. Okay, perfect. So now we go the last, uh, means it was second, but <laughs> mistakenly last. Okay. Share the link. Copy. Okay. Please open the link. Okay, question four, yes. How does your community predict the weather? One. Okay, reading the sign of nature, action of animals, wind patterns. Two colleagues. Hello, come on. Waiting more, maybe need to type because the question is, yeah, usually through certain plants, agriculture patterns. Fourth, look to the sky and predict our environment good. What's the pipped? We want to know pipped. Okay, observing rainfall pattern, temperature, wind, vegetation, good. By looking on the sky to my observe by observing maybe the morning weather, action of animal, temperature, rain, pattern, by bones of sacrifice, animals, animals or goat by pattern of nature. Okay. Eight colleagues already type their response. Okay. 
Okay, let's go fifth question then. It's nine colleagues already. Indigenous knowledge and experience. Certain, certain change in temperature and environment, the food habit and habitation. Good. Already 10 colleagues have voted. Okay, thanks to all. Let's go to the next fifth question. Okay, fifth question. You can see fifth question. What season wise specific preparations are done by your communities? What seasonal season wise specific preparations are done by your communities? Means different communities have different perceptions, understanding about changing weather, climate, and all. So we have our own kinds of preparation based on our geography, based on our uh, uh, means you know means mountain area, uh, Himalayas area, plain areas. So we are from different geographical diversities, and we have different uh, 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 different cultures, different uh, practices. So we have different kinds of preparation as well. Warm clothes for winter, perfect. Yes. Storing food during rainy season. Yes, that's good idea. That's good answer. Okay, food storage patterns, specifying growing season. Okay, nice. What next? All three seasons, okay. Clothes and food habits, agricultural and cultural practices as per the seasons, yes, true. Our communities bridge of rainwater in monsoon, yes. That's right answer. Yeah, okay, next six colleagues already voted. Okay, seventh, warm food for winter, collection rain, water for future. Okay, summer season, thin clothes and hot and heat sustaining fruits, rainy season, planting crops and, win and winter season, harvesting fruits and storing as well as fruits and clothes. Okay, summer season, thin clothes and. Okay, next. According to Kirat culture, okay, our this colleague is, I think, from Kirat community. Kirat culture, we do worship the nature, yes, harvest food grains. Okay. Okay, so five five more seconds, then then we jump in the last question, second last, but it is last now because seven we have already answered. Okay, let's get it, let's get ready for last last question. Okay. What kinds of impacts are being faced by your communities with changes in the seasons and weather? What, kind of, what kinds of impacts are being faced by your communities with changes in the seasons and weather? Okay, melting snow and glaciers. Raising temperature. One colleague has already responded. Second, road, road condition is really bad during rainy season. Yes, we agree it. Okay, third, unpredictable monsoons and storm raising temperature. True. Unpredictable rainfall destroys the crops. That's true. Health deficiency with elders and young children. Unusual kinds of sickness, irregular rainfall destroys crops yield. Loss of ancestral lands and territories due to natural and climate lead disasters. Example, landslide. Yes. Road condition, thunder in rainy. Scarcity of water during summer. Abundance of water that causes floods on rainy seasons. Storms and hilly storms causes crops destruction. Phew. Agree we with all these opinions. Sindhi people are facing water shortage because of dams in, in, in Indus River for crops and sometimes flood in Sindh. Okay, nine colleagues already responded. So five more seconds, we wait and we go back to slides. Okay, nine colleagues. Two more seconds, anyone? I may be typing, so we two more seconds. Okay, 
Thank you very much. Okay, last. Tamang are originally inhabitants in hilly and Himalayan regions. So during winter, there is less chance for harvest and agriculture. Yes, okay. Thank you very much, all of you, for your active response and participation in this pooling, in this uh, voting Mentimeter. Thank you very much. So yeah, means climate change actually, uh, climate change, okay. Okay, climate change actually uh, is this what uh, what we what we have been you know responding in the Mentimeter inbox. So means understanding of, of climate change we have different in different culture and in different geography in different communities. So it has very diverse understanding, but ultimately climate change means that effect to our that effect to our you know means uh, pattern of uh, pattern of livelihood that affects to our uh, uh, agricultural practices that affect to our cultural practices actually all those things you know means caused by the climate change means which uh, which is unpredictable as well as you know means uh, come in different forms disaster or in 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 in, in other kinds of uh, problems are the are the climate change so uh, our uh, different country context different communities and means all these uh, geographical differences cultural differences have of course different uh, vocabularies different seasons you know means different practices different uh, predictions but ultimately all those are uh, all those are the unity uh, all those are the common understanding in terms of climate change even we express in different uh, signs okay let's go uh, in impact of climate change to indigenous to indigenous communities see the the impact of indigenous communities we are the vulnerable that's why we are talking why why indigenous people's engagement is important you know because our we indigenous peoples are always means uh, uh, dwelling uh, uh, dwelling in the place where the where there are natural resources. We are in the remote areas, and in in our in our in our surrounding, there are forests, there are water, uh, there are water resources. Means because of you know means climate change, those those natural resources are always targeted. You know to 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 uh, to uh, affect us, and and that happens because because you know the uh, global statistics shows that indigenous peoples are among are the poorest uh, among the poor. That's why also you know means we are being the victim of all those uh, all those disasters, like like floods, landslides, droughts, which you have already responded in the voting. So we depend on natural resources and most at risk to climate variability and extremes for our economic activities and livelihoods that I already told because our livelihood is depending on the forest but if there is a uh, fire in the forest or if there is any landslide you know means or if there is uh, some drought uh, and those are our livelihoods is always at the risk and those are the means the root causes in the climate change means that climate change is affecting to our uh, human rights our indigenous people's rights ultimately so let's go in the next Okay, so we live in a ge geographical regions and ecosystems. You know, we uh, you already said means uh, in rainy season or in mountain in hill. Uh, you you colleagues are typing Tamang uh, Indigenous community in the hill and mountain you're typing. So you know, geographically we are in different regions. We are in different uh, ecological um, uh, you know means uh, conditions and situations. So all those things are also uh, varies uh, you know means culture to culture. And our all cultures are inherently relating with, you know, means depending on the ecosystem, depending on the natural resources. So all those things are being affected because of the climate change. And and of course, indigenous women who are re really the great caretaker of the uh, natural uh, uh, natural resources, they are really, you know, means affected more than others uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the community. Because indigenous women, they are, you know, means more involving in agriculture. They are more, you know, means uh, 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 engaging in uh, protection of the forest, water resources, and all. So, if any, if any change in the climate, and and the women who are taking care and who are, you know, means mobilizing all those resources, they are highly affected. 
and greenhouse gas, you see the carbon dioxide, uh, industrialization and uh, many more things which indigenous peoples, we, we, we really don't enjoy any kinds of benefits from industrialization, but we are being the victim of all those carbon dioxide pro produced by the greenhouse gas, produced by the industries, and if we indigenous people say the climate change happening because of this industrialization and we are criminalized, you know, means you say, oh, means uh, you are against the development and all. So the climate change again linked with the human rights, how we are being suppressed. Okay, and yes, so why we are talking about climate change? Because we indigenous peoples have, sorry if I'm speaking faster, please colleagues, uh, uh, let me sometimes notify my speaking is faster. Okay, so indigenous peoples, you know, means we have uh, a very good practices in terms of uh, adaptation and mitigation of the climate change. Uh, you see in the picture, you know, indigenous peoples, we have very collective approach to do anything. And collective ap approach is the strength of our uh, mitigation, is the strength of our uh, adaptations. We are very participatory and we are very contributive. No, we don't have that any kinds of hierarchy to, 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 to adapt any kinds of, you know, means uh, measures. So all these measures are our indigenous measures. So uh, mitigations, whatever we are doing, what we, whatever we are adapting, those are really very uh, environment friendly. And we always believe on, you know, means respect, the, respect the nature, respect uh, the natural resources. Because of that, our adaptation mitigations are, are more stronger than the scientific uh, adaptation and mitigation measures. Our colleague later uh, will focus on more how our indigenous knowledge are really instrumentals and the blessings for adaptation and mitigations uh, to the climate change. Okay, so yeah, here more, uh, uh, you, you can see, you know, means uh, our adaptation and uh, mitigations, uh, you know, means uh, we have adapted to changing environment and have dropped sophisticated and sustainable strategies to cope with environmental changes. The next, interpret and respond to climate change in a creative way, drawing our indigenous knowledge of the natural resources, base and other technologies to find solutions. And our livelihood system, occupation, indigenous knowledge, way of life are essential for combating climate change if, if, uh, effectively. So, so as uh, uh, furthermore, you can get uh, from our uh, other colleagues, and last but not the least, what I would say, without addressing the social, economic, environmental vulnerability of indigenous peoples, and without incorporating our indigenous knowledge, occupations, and ways of life into climate actions, efforts to achieve sustainable development and effectively tackle threats of climate change will remain incomplete. And indigenous peoples as partners and, and, and crucial agents of climate change have a fundamental role to play in combating climate change is putting green growth and realizing the sustainable development goals. So that's all. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, active listening and your active participation in uh, expressing your uh, opinion, expressing your uh, perception and understanding on climate change. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have anything, uh, of course, we can uh, discuss more. And it's not expert opinion of uh, what I have been saying. It's our experience from uh, our work and what we indigenous peoples uh, have been uh, doing. So yeah, but but again, in your country context, in your community context, you you might be doing uh, so many things that that I cannot bring here because of time uh, limitation. Even from my indigenous Karu community in Nepal, Lakpaji from uh, uh, Himalayas areas, and our colleague Pirawan, uh, uh, human from. Myanmar means we are from uh, uh, different countries and different communities. We we have lots of such kinds of practices, which are really you know means uh, uh, doing the great instrumental works to mitigate the climate change. So so yeah, means all these things we can discuss further later in your group work as well. So now I want to stop uh, uh, with my all these presentations and pulling. Thank you very much. Collectively, listening. Thank you very much, Premji. Um, so maybe you need to quit from sharing screen or... Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Premji, for, uh, for such a wonderful uh, presentation and your sharing. And also for uh, leading us with such an interesting and 
um, very helpful, useful uh, exercise. Um, I hope we have more uh, sessions uh, like that. Um, so next, and uh, yes, for those who have questions uh, on the presentation, about the presentation, whatever question you have, please feel free to type it in the chat box and then we will collect the uh, questions and then uh, the speakers will answer it at the end of uh, the presentations. So next, uh, I would like to invite uh, our colleague, uh, Ms. Pirawan Wangni Tisa Tapborn, uh, the Environment Program Officer from AIPP, to share, uh, to give us a presentation on Indigenous knowledge and practices on climate change adaptation. Um, so uh, Pirawan belongs to Karen Indigenous Group from uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand. She's working as an environment program officer looking after the project of climate change adaptation knowledge, indigenous knowledge and peoples in Asia and indigenous environmental human rights defenders. So we are very uh, blessed to have- Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. The... Sorry, I could not hear anything. Just a second. Okay. Hello, can you hear ah. me? Yeah, okay. now clearly, yeah. So, uh, I'm just introducing you a sure, little sure. bit. I'm, I'm in, at the last part. Um, so uh, we are very much blessed to have a very active lady like Tirawan, who is not only good at uh, technical thing, but also very good hearted person. So if you visit to Chiang Mai, please make sure you contact her and she will take you to everywhere that <laughs> are with uh, good food, and good uh, views. So, uh, P, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Shumong. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, wait, it doesn't go. Okay, as Shumong has uh, mentioned, I'm going to uh, sharing with you about the uh, indigenous knowledge and climate change. No, I may not have the technical tools like frame, no, bringing you like excitement, but uh, as I will taking care of indigenous knowledge, so I will go as the indigenous way. <laughs> okay, before we are going to the detail, no, maybe we let's start up with uh, some question. When we are talking about indigenous knowledge, what is come up in your thought? Or what is your understanding when we're saying about indigenous knowledge? What is different from the local uh, knowledge, local wisdom, or traditional knowledge? What is indigenous knowledge? You can just uh, type in your answer in the chat box, no? We will just give you one minute to see you are, uh, want to engage you in uh, intervention, no? Great. Thank you. Let me see what is the answer. Sorry. Okay, I can see knowledge of our ancestor from my colleagues, Craig. Different experience from indigenous people. Okay, it can be experience, way of living, knowledge invented by indigenous people to adopt to center environment. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Source of our survival. Wow. Let's, let's do this together now. We, I want to see like, what is your understanding really about indigenous knowledge? It can be just short one word, two words, it's okay. Because today, at least we will back to not just giving the key element no, when we are talking about indigenous knowledge. So how you really understand on that? 
Okay, it's also how we are doing things right now. So it's not just something in the past. It's happening right now as well, no? Okay, it's come from suffering and try to solve. So that means it's experiencing, no? Uh-huh, okay. Yes, thank you very much now for your answer. I can see like we have common understanding our lifestyle, yeah. It's coming our skill, knowledge, it mentioned about environment, protection, uh -huh. ancestor transmitted. Yes, it's coming to generation to generation. So we can see like it's evolving. It's not something like stop. It's continuing and it's happening now from the past until now. So let's see. Let me go back. Okay. This, I just give you the keyword now when we are talking about indigenous knowledge. Because our indigenous people, we are really rooted or we are attached to our land, territories, and resources. No? This is not limited to only forest, no? because we are come from different uh, geographical area. There are forest, mountain, sea, no? and that link to our beliefs, spiritual, our customary system, making us differently from other group. And this is making our knowledge is different. It's part two generation by generation verbally you know, in the past. Until now, of course, we have other means for documenting this and transfer this. But this one is true. Our experience and knowledge, spirit, belief, related to based on our land, territory, and resources. No, and that is why it's making the worldview and our social system, political system, everything as indigenous people. Okay, next question. Do you, uh, how to say, can give me any example of your indigenous knowledge in your community? Because we come from different country and even within the country, we have different indigenous group. So from your indigenous group, what is your indigenous knowledge? It can be uh, different or not limited to environment only. No? You can give different kind of example. So maybe let's see. Anyone you can give, no? Related to your way of life, with the nature, or with your in the household level, with the forest, with the water, with the sea. Anyone? Or still you cannot imagine what is my indigenous knowledge. <laughs> okay, maybe people still like not surely what I have in here. Okay, some people answering or not this one. The way of you're having food, agriculture system, your language, anything come up? Okay, let's not taking long time, not because we have short time. So I'm just giving some example. Okay. So you can see the picture from here, no? These are from Malaysia, the way the people are hunting by using the, how to say, the pipe, no? Putting the poison to uh, hunting the, small animal in the forest. The second one is the ritual where the people conducted when uh, during the agriculture pattern or that they uh, organize the ceremony. The below one is about weaving. No? Even we see the weaving pattern is related to the nature. No? You can see the textile, the design is so related to uh, our nature. No? It can be flower, animal, mountain. No? These are really integrated or putting in our clothes. Even with the Hmong indigenous people, some of their script also integrated into their uh, culture or their clothes no? is written in the pattern of the design of the cloth. And yeah, this is also the related to the source of the water where our indigenous people have the knowledge in terms of hunting, collecting the forest product in the sustainable way. Well, 
then why we have to talk about this now? What is the indigenous knowledge? Why is like matter in the climate change and beyond? No, why we need to mention about indigenous knowledge? Previously, you may seen from uh, my colleague's frame already mentioned, there are a lot of things happening from the climate change impact that is affecting our indigenous people. And that is portrait, people seeing us as the victims, no, marginalized. So this is the idea like we are only the victimized, like, you know, become the effect, the main, of course, we are affecting to that. But in the same way, we also have something to offer no? when it comes to climate change. We also provide a solution. When uh, in talking about climate change, most people we thinking of the scientist way, new technology, solar cell, dam, or uh, how to say, the green revolution, those things, no? the people saying that. But not only scientists can answer all the climate change impact, no? Because we are living in different geographical area, we also uh, holding different uh, experience and knowledge. That's why indigenous knowledge also provide the solution to the climate change. This one uh, just giving you like where is the indigenous knowledge uh, recognized? No, first thing you have to know about our uh, UN Drip. No, that mentioned already that indigenous knowledge is part of our rights. And that is recognized in different articles. No? You can see from the point that you can refer later not to check wait, what are they mentioned about indigenous knowledge and why it's so important. No? Because our knowledge is contributing to the uh, nature, the environment. No? In CBD is clearly mentioned in the article 8J to respect, preserve and maintain the knowledge of indigenous people no? in terms of conservation and sustainable use. And also in Article 10, not to encourage customary use of biological resources. You know? And in the UN FCC uh, framework, I mean, priorities document in uh, Article 7.5 also mentioned about the knowledge of indigenous people you know, that has to be integrated in the adaptation plan. You know? This one, uh, the international engagement will be mentioned uh, later with uh, Yumong and Lakpa. You know? They will explain you more why how uh, indigenous people engage on that. When we're talking about uh, climate change, no? there are two things like we have to, how to say, to tackle. So one is mitigation, where Prem already mentioned what is mitigation. No? It's like how we can reduce this carbon that is upcoming all the time, no? how to reduce this thing. No? So for it is one part that uh, the global have mentioned that they, this forest section can absorb the carbon, can help to reduce the carbon that in the, the, the earth. That's why a lot of policy and action plan mentioned about forest role no, in mitigate. But some action is really negative to us when it comes to conservation or increased forest area where our original people are evicted. No? So our indigenous people try to tell them like, hey, we also know how to conserve and take care of our natural resources. No? The first photo you may see, this is the practice of the current indigenous people in Thailand, where they put the children umbilical cord, no? tightly with the tree. So no one, uh, no one allowed to cut down this tree because the soul of the person of that baby of the child is part of the tree. So if you cut down this tree or destroy this tree, that means you are killing or you're harming that person's soul. No? So this is the way that our indigenous uh, knowledge, no? that to protect and conserve our forest. The second photo you can see, this is, you may see like, what is this? It's the rice field, but also have the, uh, the flower here. This is the flower where they plan to, how to say, distract the insect and animal not targeted to the, uh, their rice crop. No? So that's why they're planting different kind of crops no? in the rotational farming. So this practice do, do not require chemical. And when 
you uh, not apply the chemical, then the soil is healthy. And soil also can uh, sinking the carbon, I mean, capture the carbon as well, no? The photo below, you can see the man with the fish. This is the water, how to say, aqua uh, conservation, where they protect the fish and also the animal in the water, no? This is called Hakao system in Malaysia, where they set the certain area that no hunting zone. And also certain year, they put certain year that no one allowed to do fishing or hunting anything in the river. That's why they still have a lot of fish and also the different kind of species in the river. No? This is the conservation system where we are trying to promote it to the world that indigenous people and contributed to this uh, system. So we are using our knowledge, our belief, and our customary practices to protect and conserve our natural resources. But you can see that the climate change is already happening and sometimes it's beyond our uh, capacity. No? We have to live with it already. We cannot change 100%. So that's why we also have to adapt how to survive in this kind of situation, no? the floods, the drought, the uncertain of rainy season. So the photo here, uh, you can see the woman with her different kind of crop. Women are the one who really holding the knowledge on natural resources management as well, no? not only men. No? So the role of indigenous women is really crucial and equally with other. This one to share you like, they are the one who knowing different kind of seed. No? Some seed can really tolerate the heat and the drought. And some seed, they are really good with like a lot of water, you can still plant it. No? So we have different kind of 100, more than 100 variety of seed that can survive even like in the too much drought or like flooding time or like in really bad uh, situation of climate change. No? The second one, the photo is a check dam where the indigenous people, Akha people, they are building the check dam because during the drought they don't have water but since they're building this check dam, it's helping them to reserve the water and also protect to the bad flooding as well. No? And another one is about uh, the Pakia village where the people changing their plantation from the corn to the banana because when you plant corn you require to spend a lot of water so they change to plant the uh, how to say the banana so that the soil also can absorb more water and this one also not require chemical right now the community have more forest and they have how to say more production in the term of agriculture system no they have more production so these are the way like you already facing something and how you cope with that no so you can still survive these are our indigenous knowledge where uh, we are giving the solution to both mitigation and climate uh, and uh, adaptation okay i would end my slide with the last message no this one is the uh, po uh, how to say proverb from our current indigenous group? No, he say ke se shu le akor lo me wa kenyo shu le apoli. This mentioned that the horse they can move forward strongly because of the back feet. No, so the people also can move forward with the young generation. So I believe that you as the young generation can make a change. No? You are not just only the future, but you are also the present. And do not forget your root. No? That is made you and me uh, as indigenous people. No? Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, for sharing such a great, uh, a great session, uh, a great topic, and you have highlighted a lot on the the importance of uh, traditional knowledge, you now indigenous knowledge, and you highlighted a lot that uh, when it comes to climate change, the solutions are not only with the scientific uh, uh, ex uh, experiments, but 
many solutions are existing in our practices already. And uh, you have highlighted the role of indigenous women, the role of indigenous youths, and for your kind words to indigenous youths and for the trust. Um, so that will lead us into uh, a discussion about how indigenous peoples are engaging at the different levels, at the regional level, at the global level, as uh, uh, when it comes to climate change. Uh, uh, considering the fact that we have a number of solutions and a number of good practices that can contribute into the climate change uh, discussions at the global level. So uh, with this, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Lakpani Risharpa and myself uh, to lead uh, the sharing session on climate change discussions and processes and indigenous people's engagement. So before that, I would like to introduce uh, our resource person. Um, and uh, Mr. Lakpanuri Sherpa belongs to Sherpa Indigenous Community from Nepal. Mr. Sherpa has been working on Indigenous people's rights and environment issues for more than a decade. Currently, Mr. Sherpa is the Environment Program Coordinator of AIPP, managing projects in different countries across Asia. He is also the focal point of Indigenous peoples to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Lakpa. Okay, so thank you so much Lakpa for your time and efforts to, uh, to have the, this session here uh, for indigenous youths. And now uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Yumon, uh, uh, for that introduction. Uh, hi everyone. Um, Yumon and I will jointly be sharing the experiences of Indigenous people's engagement on climate change conventions. And my colleagues, uh, Prenji and Pirawan, has laid a very good foundation, uh, a basis for our discussions on international engagement, why it is important for Indigenous peoples to engage uh, on climate change process. Uh, the picture that you see in my uh, screen is very special for us uh, because uh, those who have been engaging in the climate change process is familiar that indigenous peoples, including other constituencies, are an observers. No? We cannot really engage in the negotiating table with governments, which they call unit frequency parties. So we have been really, uh, how to call that, fighting to have our own space to discuss our issues and to put forward the, the solutions that Premji and Pirawan were highlighting. No? It's, we're not just the victims of climate change, but we also have solutions to contribute to the, the process. And this is the picture that was taken when the first meeting of the climate change conventions that officially included a separate agenda on indigenous peoples. No? Uh, specifically focusing on indigenous knowledge. So you can see indigenous brothers and sisters from Africa, Asia, and also Latin America, and from various regions. So you can see Yumon there, myself, and also Pasang, our chairperson Kitisak, including others. And the most important thing about this event also, it was led by an indigenous woman. No? So Pirawan has very much uh, already highlighted what contribution and significance that indigenous women can bring in the table when they engage in the climate change process. So just to set an objective, human and I will try to at least give you an, a, 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 a very good information on how are indigenous peoples engaging uh, in the international process and what has been the achievement so far and how can those people who haven't engaged in the process yet, how can they engage in this process and bring their experiences and solutions? So that would be an attempt to respond from our sharing. Okay. Why it is not changing? Okay. Uh, just to ask a quick question. How many of you have heard the term UNFCCC uh, before? 
or do you know the full form of UNF triple C? Can you please uh, put in the chat box? How do I see the chat box? How to see the chat box? Okay, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Okay, that's great. I think. No, go on. Okay, great. I think some of you uh, are familiar with the term climate change because uh, we didn't really have a very good assessment of the level of understanding no, our participants will have. So we have tried to make our sharing as basic as possible so that at least we try to lay a very uh, a common understanding on, on, on our engagement at international level. So you're right, the people who have uh, answered in the group, uh, the full form of the UNFCCC is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Okay, yeah, that's... So basically, it's a climate change conventions that came out in 1992, no? If you have been following the international process, especially on an environment, the Rio summit, the Earth summit in 1992, uh, in, at, in that year, the Convention on Climate Change, the Convention on Biological Diversity, and the Convention to Combat Desertification, no? the three very, very important uh, environmental conventions came out in 1992. And the objective of this convention, Convention on Climate Change, is basically to address all the, the, the problems that PrimG has highlighted, but also to explore solutions no, that Piramon has highlighted. So it's basically to address the, the growing problems that not just indigenous peoples, but the whole planet is facing and coming out with solutions. And uh, there is now a, a universal agreement on climate change, uh, which is very popularly known as Paris Agreement. That's, that's a guiding agreement for developing countries and also developed countries to develop an action plan to respond to the, the uh, climate crisis. I will come to that a bit later on also what can we do at the national level. So just to briefly tell you, the Secretariat of the Climate Change Convention, it is situated in Bonn, uh, which is in Germany. And that's the website. You can find more information about uh, the UNFCCC uh, in that uh, website. Uh, I don't need to explain this uh, because uh, the earlier colleagues have very <laughs> clearly highlighted, but just one point on, on why climate change should not be just regarded as uh, environmental issues. Actually, it's the human rights uh, issues. No? And we have been also trying very hard to convince uh, government that climate should, should not be just seen as environment, but also a human rights issue. And we have been uh, able to make uh, shift the mindset of a couple of governments and there are also champions in, in the international level who are supporting indigenous people's uh, advocacy. So it's good to see that change because of our regular engagement. So how are indigenous peoples engaging in the climate change? Uh, so there is uh, indigenous peoples engaging in the climate change uh, convention come from uh, different reasons. Uh, so we have in total seven regions and they come together under a common platform which is called International Indigenous Peoples Forum on Climate Change. So it meets twice a year, uh, either in April or May and then November, December. That's where the, the conference of parties takes place. Um, and then also there is a preparatory meeting of Indigenous Peoples right before the actual uh, uh, meet, uh, official meeting so that a necessary preparation is done. Uh, because we indigenous peoples have different experiences. Asia has its own experience, Pacific has their own, Russia, similarly Arctic, Africa. So this platform really brings uh, the very diverse experiences, rich experiences from all the regions and come together, share, learn from each other and put forward uh, consolidated uh, proposals. No? So it's not 
Asia will say one thing and Pacific will say the other thing. When we talk to the government in, in, in the climate change conventions as indigenous peoples, we are one voice. No? So that's the strategy that we have put forward so that uh, every, all the indigenous peoples from all the regions are always united uh, while advocating with the government. We meet every morning from nine to 10, like other conventions. Uh, also in climate change, there are so many issues, no? So it's difficult for uh, one person to follow everything. There are issues in finance, there are issues in adaptation, there are issues on in indigenous knowledge. So there are, there are discussions happening on gender. So we established the working group uh, among the different uh, brothers and sisters that comes to attend the meetings. And we regularly follow through that uh, working groups. So that's the modalities that is in place for us to engage in the international level. What are the opportunities? Not just for indigenous peoples, for any uh, observers who are engaging in the climate change conventions. We get to make an intervention also in the opening and also in the closing sessions of all the, uh, of all the plenaries no, that uh, happens in the conventions. Also, we have been able to pioneer actually a good practice to have a dialogue between government and indigenous peoples before the actual meeting so that we are able to convey our message to the government. This is what we want from this meeting. This is our proposals. And also this facilitates for us to actually comprehend which government actually supports our proposals and which governments doesn't. And that also helps us to strategize, okay, we need to have a further discussion and dialogues with this government that doesn't understand or support our proposals. So this also helps us to, uh, how to call that, um, for the strategies in order to make an impact because when we engage in the international level we have one objective and that is to make sure that the rights of indigenous peoples are actually on the table of discussion and and it is there when they make any decisions because like premji and piraon has said we are the one affected we have the contribution and we don't want any policies that's coming from the international level again affect indigenous peoples no? So that's the whole uh, the objective. And other opportunities is the press conference. So this is, uh, uh, I think we did in 2016, Yumon was speaking on behalf of youth and also their sisters from uh, Africa, our brother from uh, also Africa and Latin America and North America. So this is the way when there is something that we need to convey, there is something urgent that came out and government are not listening to us. We organize the press conference and also invite the media <laughs> To actually convey what we uh, issue we have uh, in the process. We also have opportunities uh, to organize a side event, but for this to have a side event, you need to be an accredited organizations, uh, observer organizations in the convention. And if you organize into indigenous peoples organizations, then uh, you can, if you want to be an observer organization of climate change process, then you can write to me because I'm also the focal point of the indigenous peoples. I can connect you to the secretary uh, of the conventions and, and uh, facilitate the process. So this is one of the, the side events that we organized uh, in, I think in Germany, uh, focusing on indigenous women's issues. And AIPP has been very conscious to make sure that we are always uh, prioritizing the indigenous women including the indigenous youth issues and, and, and messages in our activities. The other ways to influence or convey our messages is the submissions. And IGA is one of our very long-term partner uh, uh, working on climate change. And we have done several submissions. This is just one of the submissions that we did in 2020. I think that was in February. Uh, besides, because we need to have different kind of strategy, dialogues, discussion, but then also we need actions. Uh, so you can do actions, of course, peaceful actions and demonstration inside the official building and outside the official building. So the one you see at the top is the one we did in Bangkok. I think it should be in 2009. That was that is outside the official process, uh, building. But the one below was in 2015 when the government were negotiating the Paris Agreement and there was a threat that rights of indigenous peoples will be deleted from the Paris Agreement. And this is where we brought together all our brothers and sisters from seven regions and, and protest uh, and, and organize a peaceful protest to, to uh, uh, send a message to the government, this is not right. Uh, 
our rights should not be negotiated. It should be ensured in the, the Paris Agreement. And which uh, Newman will talk a bit later on what have we achieved from that. We also do a lot of uh, advocacy paper because we always have an objective to influence the, to contribute to the process. And this is how we also uh, prepare ourselves uh, with the policy paper so that we can have an evidence-based kind of discussions with the policymakers. And that is very important. Uh, unless we have evidence, uh, it would be very difficult to convince the government uh, on what we are saying. And we are very conscious of that. And we have been, uh, uh, how do you call that, prioritizing a lot on documentation work uh, for our organization as well. Uh, but there are also limitations. It's not just opportunities because uh, we are observers there and we cannot participate in all the the negotiations, especially closer meetings, and statements and interventions for of the organizations are allowed at the end of the meeting. Most of the time, when governments finish speaking, no? so <laughs> when sometimes it's like we have to keep waiting and waiting, and when we say deliver a message, there is hardly any people listening to our messages. No? So that's one challenge, and also the limitation in the time. It's maximum two minutes. And also, we don't have dedicated funding uh, for indigenous peoples uh, to attend the United Peoples meetings. That's why there's so much of homework that indigenous organizations has to do to raise funds and then bring together all the peoples and then engage in the process. No? So we have been demanding uh, for a long time already to the climate change uh, secretary and also parties to have a specific funding for indigenous peoples. Language is a barrier because they don't allow interpretation for indigenous language. And many of our indigenous leaders uh, cannot speak English and cannot express articulate issues uh, in English. But in the UN meetings, you will have only translation in six UN languages. No? That's why, again, we need to raise funds to bring interpreter along with ourselves to bring in the ground uh, uh, people to deliver the messages. This is, again, adds more uh, financial burden to, to indigenous organizations. So, how does the UNIT Report Secretary communicate with indigenous organizations? Uh, like I said, there are indigenous organizations from seven regions engaging, and they communicate with the uh, indigenous organizations through a focal point. So, there is two global focal points uh, that have been nominated for the, I mean, appointed for to the Climate Change Secretary. One is English speaking and one is uh, Spanish speaking. Uh, Spanish speaking focal point is our brother uh, Stavancio from Panama. And for English speaking focal point, that's me. Uh, that's why I was saying in the beginning, if you need to know anything about the indigenous people's engagement in the international level, feel free to write to me or feel free to access any information that you need for the uh, indigenous engagement at international level. So now I'd like to invite our sister um, Yumon uh, to continue the sharing of our lights and movement. Okay, Yumon, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Lakpa. Um, hello, everyone, again. Um, so, uh, as Lakpa mentioned, uh, there are a number, so when we go into this uh, climate change discussions and when we start uh, following all these uh, different discussions it's a really really big venue where uh, I, I remember when the first time I joined uh, this uh, meeting I, I felt lost for the for the first week so it it's a sort of uh, uh, venue where we need a lot of coordination and cooperation among us um, so where do I start okay so here, uh, indigenous peoples, uh, the recognition of indigenous peoples, uh, when it comes to climate change discussions, has increased uh, a lot, uh, that we have to say, uh, even though there, uh, there, there are still some limitations in terms of uh, decision making. So one of the uh, results uh, I mean, there, uh, as Lakpa mentioned, indigenous peoples, indigenous leaders, uh, our leaders have been trying to engage in these processes and trying to influence the decisions that impact, uh, that have impacts on indigenous peoples for decades already. And now in 2015, 
there has been a, just, uh, a celebration on Indigenous Peoples Women Day, Indigenous Women Day. So uh, this is a really big uh, recognition to Indigenous women's contribution into climate change uh, actions and solutions. Uh, so this is uh, also to recognize the uh, in, uh, this, the contributions that Indigenous women can make, not only at the ground level, but also at the discussions that are happening at the international level. And also to highlight the importance of Indigenous women's contribution. And, uh, the, uh, and so since 2015, we have that every year uh, uh, during the uh, climate change negotiations. Um, so the other one is Indigenous Peoples Day celebration, which started since 2017. Actually, this one, Indigenous Peoples Day, is a high-level celebration. Uh, so uh, this is joined by very high-level uh, decision makers from the UNFCCC. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the secret, the head of the secretariat, joined the celebration in 20. 18 when I joined also. So this is joined by the, also the top level from the uh, negotiation partners. So this is a very much uh, visible uh, sort of celebration uh, in the UNFCCC uh, discussion process. Uh, yes, and next slide. Trying to change. <laughs> it's not going. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, when we talk about indigenous peoples organiz uh, organizations engagement, there are other constituencies who are engaging in the UNFCCC, uh, which I think will might be very much interesting for other brothers and sisters who are from non-indigenous uh, organizations who join us here today. Uh, so uh, these uh, constituencies also show that climate change is a topic, a subject, in a theme that we all need to work together. So it's not only scientists who can work uh, to solve these climate change um, problems. So we, there are nine uh, constituencies, uh, including uh, indigenous peoples organizations uh, constituency. The first group is business and industry non-governmental organizations, uh, bingo. So we, uh, when we uh, engage uh, in the discussions, we, we see uh, a number of uh, these groups because oh, we all know that a number of uh, factors that drive uh, climate change uh, come from business sector. So here, uh, and also we need, uh, we need them because they have all those money. Uh, in their hands. So we, uh, business and industry non-governmental organizations, bingo, is one of the constituencies. The other one is environmental non-governmental organizations, uh, ENGO, and farmers non-governmental organizations, uh, indigenous peoples organizations. The other one is local government and mu municipal authorities. So uh, it, it's really important uh, how uh, it, uh, uh, I mean, it's really interesting to see how these uh, representatives speak uh, in the terms of uh, the interests and also uh, contribution of their respective groups uh, when we go to the, uh, the negotiations. And the other one is research and independent non-governmental organizations, which are called RINGO, uh, trade unions non-governmental organizations, TUNGO, and women and gender non-governmental organizations who are working mainly on uh, gender equality and women issues. And the other one is youth non-governmental organizations, Yongo. So all these nine constituencies, there are a number of occasions where we uh, work, uh, where we work together uh, jointly, um, sorry. Um, so for indigenous peoples, uh, when we go to, when we start to engage in these discussions, uh, in these processes, it's the indigenous peoples organization like IIPFCC, which uh, Lakpa shared is the, uh, the platform that we joined first. And then uh, we are also active, uh, indigenous peoples are very much active in uh, women and gender non-governmental organizations uh, group. Uh, indigenous women uh, have uh, quite a number of uh, participation in, in that 
constituency, and the other one is uh, Yongo. So youth, uh, indigenous youth who participate in these uh, negotiations, in these processes, we try also. We also try to engage a lot in Yongo because in Yongo you can meet a number of youth-led uh, organizations who are working, uh, youth-led organizations, youth-led networks uh, who are working mainly on uh, climate change. So uh, it's really worth uh, joining these groups. So also through these two uh, women and gender group and then uh, with uh, young go through uh, also through these constituencies we try to be vocal and uh, make our issues uh, visible uh, from this space um, so um, so from all these uh, engagements made by different indigenous people's groups organizations networks uh, throughout the previous a uh, couple of decades. There have been a number of uh, major achievements that have been made. Um, so uh, the first, uh, the, the most visible one I would say is uh, in our, through our participation, indigenous people's participation in uh, COP21, Conference of Parties 21 in 2015, which happened in uh, France in Paris. That's why the, the agreement that uh, resulted from that meeting is also called Paris Agreement. So uh, indigenous people's participation was really, really visible and thrilling at uh, that meeting. And we had uh, more than 100 indigenous people's representative who participated in that uh, COP21. And it was also the first time that indigenous person with disabilities participated in a similar discussion, in, in, in climate change discussion, and that was achieved from the Asia region. So uh, Lakpa and other colleagues were a part of there, uh, part of that processes. Um, so in the preamble of the Paris Agreement, it recommends parties to respect, promote, and consider the rights of indigenous peoples while taking actions against climate change. So uh, there has been like a number of advocacy actions, a number of activities, a number of efforts made by indigenous uh, leaders. And this is like the first time we see that formally acknowledged and recognized and the, the, this uh, um, recognize the, the role of indigenous peoples in uh, climate change actions. Uh, in, in Article 7, uh, it refers to the knowledge of indigenous peoples. So with that, uh, the establishment of local communities and indigenous peoples platform came. So uh, as a result from the Paris Agreement, as a part of implementation, a platform where indigenous peoples knowledge, so our colleague Pira One shared a number of indigenous knowledge uh, practices that exist in different indigenous communities. So uh, all those indigenous knowledge and practices, good practices, so that these can uh, contribute into the solutions that are taken by uh, taken by uh, decision makers in climate change discussions. Uh, so this platform will serve uh, to uh, for us to contribute. Um, so uh, before before that, uh, we were observer. We were in a traditional observer status. Indigenous peoples uh, uh, organizations are along with other eight constituencies. We were in observer status, but with the establishment of local communities and indigenous peoples uh, facilitative working group in 2018, we have seven people. Uh, representatives from state member states and we have seven representatives from indigenous people's representative and they work together on the uh, on this working group and uh, they set out uh, the conditions for how uh, the, uh, this uh, in this platform LCIP and in, in short we call it LCIP LCIP platform will be functioning so uh, in, in through this platform we like oh, we indigenous peoples have the same uh, status equal status with uh, states member states and we are uh, and this platform has enabled uh, our participation in uh, decision making formal and official so right now we are for Asia uh, we have from Asia we have uh, Miss uh, Dr. Pasang Dolma Sherpa from 
uh, Nepal as representative and co-representative uh, Mina Setra from uh, Indonesia. So right now, Ms. Pasang is the current Indigenous co-chair of the facilitative working group. So what I wanted to highlight was uh, that uh, throughout the, we have uh, throughout all these different kinds of engagements, different ways of uh, advocacy and this have been achieved uh, so far in, in our, uh, through our status of participation uh, in the process. Next. So, uh, so far, as Lakpa also, our brother Lakpa also highlighted, it's, it's really important for us to work collectively so that our voice can be one and we have a very strong voice together as uh, indigenous peoples. Uh, but time and again, it's uh, really, sometimes it's really difficult to coordinate all these different regions when we have uh, different contextual needs, uh, when we have different situations. So, um, and also we have different uh, platforms. Uh, we have been discussing about, we have been talking about UNFCCC, but we also have uh, regarding uh, Convention on Biological Diversity and also IBES. So uh, all these, in order to coordinate Indigenous people's participation and the main messages, the key interventions that we would like to make in order to coordinate all those different actions, AIPP has pioneered uh, the organization of uh, annual Asia Conference of Indigenous Peoples on Environmental Processes, because there are so many different processes and you will become dizzy if you try to engage in all these different sort, um, ways of uh, engagement uh, in different venues. So uh, in order to coordinate our voices, in order to coordinate our messages, EIPP has since 2019, uh, EIPP uh, conducted this one. Uh, so this is uh, really important for us, but in 2020, because of uh, COVID, we cannot uh, have it have one, but hopefully in 2021, there will be one. And if you yourself are interested, and if you are someone who is active on the ground on indigenous uh, environmental issues, then you are very much welcome to connect yourself to this uh, sort of existing platform. So. Um, in terms of participation, or you can also see in this photo, uh, in terms of uh, youth participation, it has started already, but uh, we really would like to see more like thriving uh, indi uh, indigenous youth participation in these all these discussions. So, so we would like to invite indigenous youths to be more active. Uh, and it, we still need to work a lot, even though we have a few indigenous youths I think from Asia, we don't have more than 10 people who are active, uh, who are active uh, from indigenous youth communities uh, in climate change uh, negotiations, uh, discussions. So we really like to see more youths in, uh, uh, in participating in these uh, processes. So actually this, uh, let's say this webinar, this session is one of the first steps we take uh, in coordination with, in cooperation with AIPP and uh, other uh, youth uh, uh, members who are uh, active, who are interested in this. So uh, there will be more actions uh, in way forward. So we would also like you, uh, like to invite all of you to be a part of uh, all these different processes to come. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, conclude our presentation. And in the next uh, session, we'll also hear from uh, hear about Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. So there, you you can listen more about how Indigenous youths are organizing ourselves. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. And so being a presenter and also being a, a facilitator. Um, Um, I would like to invite, uh, we haven't seen many questions yet. There are a few, but we are still waiting for a few more questions uh, to see how much you are interested and how much you want to know more. Um, so before we go to the answer session, uh, I would like to invite our brother Charu for uh, introducing the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform, which I just mentioned. 
So uh, before the presentation, I would like to introduce our speaker a bit. Um, Charu Bikash uh, Tripura is an indigenous person from uh, Bangladesh, uh, Tripura indigenous, belonging to Tripura indigenous group. Mm -hmm. So uh, Charu, our brother Charu has been working with AIP since 2016, and he's the person who is in charge of regional capacity building program. So he's also the person who contributed a lot in establishing our Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. So uh, the floor is yours, uh, Charuda, and you have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Yumun. And uh, thank you everyone who are watching uh, uh, this webinar. And yeah, so uh, time is only the 10 minutes. So I'll try to finish my discussions within the 10 minutes. So just uh, before discussing about the SA Indigenous Youth Platform, yeah, I, I, I want to back, uh, uh, I want to go back, yeah, the, about the regional capacity building program, how it, it has been conceived in EIPP. So all you know that the, uh, before adopting the right of indigenous people uh, in the, uh, UN, yeah, uh, the, the, through the adoptions of the UN DRIP and also in the ILO 169s and in, in, in different uh, UN sister organizations before adopting the rights of the indigenous people. Basically, the uh, our movement yeah, for the indigenous right was actually confined within our country. Yeah, so when UN adopted our rights uh, in, uh, in the UN DRIP. And then the, the scope for the indigenous people has been created uh, to do advocacy work at the global level. Yeah? Basically, I would say at the UN level. And then uh, the, the indigenous leader met together and they, they established the uh, Asia Indigenous People Pact uh, in uh, 1992. Yeah? And then since the Asia Indigenous uh, People Pacts had been established uh, uh, in uh, 1992. And uh, so AIP, uh, the AIPP and focusing uh, its work in different uh, thematic area. Uh, if I say that one is the, the environment program that already you now saw the, uh, the LACPA Prem and then Sepiro one what, uh, and also Yumon what presented. And like that program, we in AIPP, we have also the human rights program communication program, and then organizational strengthening. But the uh, AIPP leadership uh, with its member, member organization, they realized that. So now a scope uh, uh, for the movements, uh, for the right of indigenous people had been strengthened at the global level, from country level to global level. So now our leadership they found through, through, through their work, that's the, there is a crisis of the leadership the, for the for the works of the rights of indigenous people, because now lots of lots of process and mechanism at the global level, and also lots of the the, the things to be done at the country level. But the leadership is too much crisis now for the indigenous uh, in, in this indigenous uh, uh, rights. So that's why the AIPP leadership they realized better uh, uh, to create another program in AIPP, and that is the call is the regional capacity building programs. So this program had been conceived in EIPP in 2005. Basically, the mainly focusing for the, for, uh, on the issues of indigenous youth. So the main reason is that to build up a second line of leadership the, in, the, in, the, in the overall the movements of indigenous people rights in Asia. So that is the actually main, main purpose to build up the uh, second line of leadership. So, so when the, uh, the regional capacity building program had been conceived in uh, AIPP. Uh, so uh, AIPP leadership uh, was thinking to also the establish one youth, a regional youth platform. But the, let, uh, but the AIPP leadership that time thought that that time is not the proper time uh, the, to establish the, uh, Asia, uh, the, the youth plat regional youth platform because that time at the country level, so the, the indigenous youth movements not too much stronger and not too much grounded. So that's why the, since 2005, the AIPP 
through it is regional capacity building program that uh, had works lots at the country level. So now you can see there is a many youth national uh, national youth network at the country level. As example, if I say that in Nepal there is one uh, the youth national network. This is called the YFIN. And also you can see in Malaysia, Belia Juas, and also in Thailand, the Tonkala, the youth network. And in Myanmar, the Nationality Youth Forum. So like that, we have a many now national youth network. And then you can see with other, the parent, the indigenous organization, there is a many indigenous, uh, the indigenous youth wind. Uh, you can find in Bangladesh also the Bangladesh Adivasi Satra Sangram Parishad. So like that in many countries, there is also uh, the youth wins with the parent organizations. Then after having all those the youth organizations and also the youth wins with the parent organizations, that EIPP leadership that realized that, okay, now the, uh, the youth movements, uh, well ground that's at the country level and very strong. So now this is the time to have one regional, uh, the indigenous uh, youth platform say, at, at the regional level. So that's why last year in June, uh, <coughs> the, the youths from the 12 countries, we met together in Chiang Mai and then uh, we, 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 we had a lot of, lots of discussions uh, uh, to establish uh, the, uh, the youth platforms uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the regional level. And then the, in, in, in June, so we established uh, the youth platform that is the called Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. So in this youth platform now, regional capacity building program, actually they are working, uh, 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 regional capacity building program has a huge work now uh, uh, for uh, the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. And also now many international organizations are joining to support uh, this platform. As example, if I, I say, when we, uh, we was establishing these youth platforms, that time we have also the cooperation and help uh, from UNESCO Bangkok office. Uh, so it's still they, they, they are now still with us uh, to work for the, for the, for the youth uh, through the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. So basically this is the background uh, that how the, the, these youth platforms, these regional youth platforms came in, in, in AIPP. So this is the background. So now, uh, slightly, I want to task the, the what the actually the vision uh, for the youth platform. So the vision is that so we want actually to see a sustainable world, the where the indigenous youth play a leading role in achieving respect and equality for indigenous peoples through the full recognition of their human rights. So this is the vision actually for for the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. And then now come the, the purpose or objective. So it's very simple, the purpose here, yeah? the recognizing the UN declarations on the rights of indigenous peoples. That is in bracket, that is we call the UN brief. And the fundamental importance of realizing and protecting human rights of indigenous youth, Asia indigenous youth platform will work collectively to address, to address a number of interconnected issues, which is affecting actually young indigenous people. So the, the connected issues later, later on, I, I'll show you in, 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 the, in the following, following, following present, uh, uh, presentation. So uh, the membership the, for the indigenous youth platforms, uh, the, there is a certain condition, the criteria, that is the first criteria is the age that we say, the, the indigenous youth should be the, uh, within 18 to 35 years old. And then second, definitely the indigenous youth should be involved uh, in indigenous youth activities at, their, uh, at, the, at the country level and also the, at the global and international level. Wherever it is, but they, they have to be involved in the uh, indigenous youth activities. And definitely residents in and AIPP member country now, right now we have a 14 member countries in Asia. Uh, so the, the indigenous youth have to be the, 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 the residents from, from those countries. So the structure of the Asia indigenous youth platforms. So we have a, the four types, four categories. So one is the council 
and then second is executive the co committee and third is the working committee and advisor uh, and ad advisory and then last is the secretariat so in the council we have a 14 members so as in in the council there will be the the uh, uh, 14th uh, <coughs> uh, uh, 14, 14 14 member and plus aipp representative Fourteen country and plus the uh, the alternates, so two from each country. So it will be the twenty eight in the council, and one is the from the AIPP representative. So in our uh, AIPP there is an executive council. So in the executive council there is a one positions from the youths. We we say that youth representative in the in the in the AIPP executive council. So, so automatically the the youth uh, the representative representative in the AIPP executive council uh, automatically will be in the in, in the council. So here is the executive the council for Asian business youth platform. So uh, basically here is the actually uh, in in the executive council not not the alternate here is the 14th only the from each country but the uh, the again the one is from the uh, uh, from the Asia Indigenous, uh, Asia Indigenous uh, People Packs, the the EU representative in the in the in the in the AIPP, the council members. So uh, this is uh, this is the, this is the working committee. So we have a six thematic uh, th thematic the the issues. The, uh, those had been the identify. When we established in last year uh, uh, the the Asia Indigenous uh, the uh, the youth platform in, in last year the when we established that time our youths who we are in the in the, in the in, in the program they identified some some area uh, to work for the for the Asia Indigenous youth platform so there is a six thematic area so in every thematic area there is a working group. So this working group actually basically is a temporary, and then the member also in the working group is uh, uh, not uh, uh, is depends that who are interested actually uh, uh, to be involved, and also depends on the works of the of the thematic issues. And then the we have an advisory committee. This advisory committee is still not the established. Uh, because the just that our the, our platform is growing, yeah. So uh, so that there will be the one advisory committee. So the advisory committee actually uh, will be drawn from graduated member of SCI Indigenous Youth Platform and some academics and community leaders and from others also. So it is it is yet to uh, establish. And so for the SCI Indigenous Youth Platform, there will not be any separate secretariat so as this this the platform had been initiated by aipp so this the role the role of the secretariat will be under the regional capacity building program so uh, regional capacity building program will look after all the works of the secretariat as example I, if i say that uh, financial management technical support administrative support communications uh, if, if there is a, any annual plan is to develop and reports in collaboration with the executive council and uh, and and the other youths, uh, so the the regional capacity building program actually the will will, will play the role as a secretariat. So that is the actually the the the, the structure of the SCI Indigenous Youth Platform. And then what I mentioned earlier that the we the, the Indigenous Youth they identify the six thematic uh, thematic areas. So this is the here. So what they, they, they brought through the group discussions. So first is the education, and then second is health, and then a third one is loss of culture, which are also the we call the indigenous knowledge. So who is this very uh, closely related to the environment program that they are working? I think that already you have uh, uh, observed and seen the presentation from Piro one. Then Piro one the discuss lots of on indigenous knowledge. So on this issue also the uh, the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform will focus in their work, and then the land rights. This is the hot issue land rights right now 
because the, all you know that the, the lens how is uh, 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 the, the taking out by the by the mainstream people and also by the company. So that is the also need to focus. And then yeah, political participation. You know that when we, we come about the about the leadership, so it's, uh, political participation automatically comes. So our youths are, are not the engaged in the in the in the, in the political arena. So then, then that they will not understand the whole the issue of indigenous people. Then how they, they, they will be engaged in the movement of indigenous people. So that is the, also one area. And then the main another last is last point is the employment. This is the very uh, I would say the very uh, crucial points uh, for the indigenous youth because they are getting the uh, the degree from the university and then when they go for the competition with the country uh, young men. Uh, if I say the mainstream people, they face lots of challenges. So this is the, also one thing, the, 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 the employment one. So on this issue also, the, the ASEAN Indigenous Youth Platform will work. So that is the area, actually the sixth area. And uh, just here, I want to bring uh, all the youths who are now uh, having uh, follow the, the discussions. Uh, so I would request we have a, uh, Facebook accounts for the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. Just you, you charge uh, writing the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform. That auto automatically will come. Uh, then you can you can follow that that uh, that page. Uh, and so every month there is a lots of things related to Indigenous Youth, related to the Indigenous Youth Platforms. Lots of things shared in, in the in the in, in the Facebook. So you you I would request all you to 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 follow the Facebook. Yeah. So as the time is only the four ten minutes, I will not go yeah for more the discussion. Actually, there is a lots of thing to talk about the about the platforms and other things. So I will just uh, keep limitations my discussion here. And uh, thank you very much for 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 listening and for following my discussions. And if you have any questions related to the SCI Indigenous Youth Platform, just you can you can write. And then we will take note and we'll take the, the questions and we'll try to respond later on. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Brother Charu, for uh, such a wonderful sharing. So there are also, uh, I'm sure that there are a number of youths here in this group of participants um, who would like to engage more in the uh, youth related indigenous youth related activities so please feel free to contact uh, brother Charu uh, so next uh, we will go to the answering session so we have uh, a few questions that were raised by uh, our participants so uh, for the first question, I would like to invite uh, Brother Lakpa uh, to answer the question. That the question is that, to what extent that indigenous peoples organizations make climate policy to UN level for indigenous peoples? Some countries do business in other countries, but they don't follow the policy and law of environment protection. So indigenous peoples are suffering a lot from outlanders who deteriorate our environments. That kind of problems remain silent till today, as far as I'm concerned. So can you please kindly answer that question? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Yumor. Uh, that's a very, very important uh, issue that our uh, participant, our youth uh, has raised. And I think this is something that we have always been in our priority you now, whenever we engage in any of the regional or international meetings. So just like I think there are a number of points in that uh, question, so I would go one by one and also because our colleagues are also engaging in other uh, UN processes where there are also specific initiatives responding to that point. So I would also invite Premji and Pirawan to contribute to the, the sharing. So just to start with, uh, you are very right. Uh, the, the implementation of any the policies, no? whether it's climate change or whether it's on biodiversity or whether it's on other issues. Let's take an example of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. No? If you 
take the context of Asia, most of the governments have already adopted the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, but the implementation is very weak. Still, there are a number of states that still do not legally recognize indigenous peoples as peoples, but instead there are attempts actually to evict uh, the indigenous peoples from their own territories, which is creating a lot of problems, no? And this is something, uh, so land rights has been at the center of our advocacy work on, on climate change, biodiversity, and other UN mechanisms that we're engaging uh, at the international and national level. You're very right that uh, we as indigenous peoples, we don't, uh, until to my knowledge and, and experiences that we don't drop some policy and give it to the climate change conventions. But what has been our experiences and what has been our approach is to engage in the, the, uh, the climate change uh, existing processes and to make sure that our voices are heard. It's not that we are just attending, but then we want our voices to be heard and reflected in the decisions, no? And like Yumon has already said that one of the concrete uh, results that we have gained so far from our very long, because like I said in my sharing that we have always been trying to have our own space in the convention. And that was finally achieved in, in 2015 with various decisions to have local communities and indigenous peoples back and established, no? And then where now indigenous peoples also has equal space with the government as co-chairs and also as the members of the facilitated working group. Uh, so yeah, it a lot also depends on when you come down to the country level, the, the situation is completely different. There are a number of countries that support fully when they engage in the international level, but then when you come back to the country level, it's the, the implementation of those agreements and instruments is not happening. And um, if you have recently, if there is a global witness report that has been released recently, and it says that more than, I think it's around 222 or 212 land and environmental defenders have been murdered just because they are protecting the lands, just because they are protecting the environment. So there is a huge risk if this kind of pattern continues, it would be very, very impossible to tackle all the, 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 how to call that, the international goals that we have put on the Paris Agreements, on the SDC. So it's a huge threat to all the international goals and commitments that we have, uh, the governments have made, unless we really uh, ensure the protection and safety of the land and environmental defenders. And, and Asia region is, 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 is also, the uh, situation is worsening, no? And if, I think it's 43 from the Philippines, six from India, three from Com uh, Indonesia, and one from Cambodia were murdered in 2019. And out of the 12, 212, 40% of them are indigenous peoples. And 10, out of 10, one are women. No? So you can see the very, uh, how to call that, very difficult situation, very worsening situation that's happening, not just in Asia, but beyond. And I think that's where uh, like Charu said about the indigenous youth, we need to be organized. We need to continue advocating, continue engaging, continue finding strategy to, uh, how to call that, to make our engagement effective and, and basically empowering our defenders, no? our youth defenders, our women defenders, our indigenous people defenders, and really fight to protect our lands. Uh, because if we don't do that, then our identity, culture, and everything is at stake. So uh, I would just like to invite Premji uh, also because he's also engaging in the UNEP process because in climate change conventions, even though we are trying to use this uh, local communities and indigenous people's platform to influence the policy discussions, but uh, there is still a, a need for to strengthen our uh, policy advocacy works on defenders issue, but there is some uh, good initiatives that has already happened in the UNEP process where Premji is engaging. So I think it's good Premji to share that experiences as well. Thank you, Yumon. Thank you very much for the question. Actually, it's the question is cross-cutting with uh, different environmental process and because it's raging the environment protection. So it's not only just uh, in means uh, one in all, but uh, it's a multi-dimensional question because environment means climate change, biodiversity, uh, and so many things. So yeah, uh, uh, like what he said about the uh, 
uh, uh, UNEP Triple C uh, the climate change process and all and how how they are trying to means how they raise the issues means uh, it's a climate change as a human right issue and the participation of the indigenous peoples and how the you know the climate change uh, is coming as a threat of you know means the human right violations of, of uh, indigenous people. So uh, as I flow to as I engage in uh, union environment uh, uh, union environment process in 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 union environment process it's uh, in every two years uh, there is uh, assembly of the uh, union environment and it uh, it takes place in in. Nairobi, the headquarter of uh, at the headquarter of Union Environment, and Union Environment uh, uh, introduced in uh, environmental defenders policy in in uh, in the third in the third UNIA, UNIA uh, United Nations Environment Assembly, and uh, in this means uh, Union Environment is really taking serious, you know, as uh, how the indigenous environment uh, environmental defenders and other the uh, other environmental defenders are being threat you know it's not only because of the climate change because of when they are trying to protect the environment so the protection of the environment is not only just being limited in particular country or in the in the boundary but it is it is beyond the you know means uh, uh, territorial of uh, of any uh, particular uh, state so that's the global challenge so we say this climate change is the global challenge it's not the challenge of any particular country it's not the threat of any particular indigenous community if it happens somewhere so it affects to uh, means in uh, at the different level to the different communities its 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 impact is really very wider so if you talk about the uh, process of this environmental protection uh, union environment also you know means uh, assembly also adopt lots of uh, uh, resolutions the member countries they pass the uh, they pass the uh, resolutions but the thing is it's not uh, it's not legally binding so if we strongly talk about the human rights it must be legally binding and if the things are in the voluntary approach then voluntary approach sometimes you know it's if i find good i can you know means adapt it or i can take it seriously for implementation if i don't you know means like then i can take it seriously and i can ignore so sometimes there are policies there are the you know means uh, resolutions there are the uh, uh, international treaties but if those are not legally binding it's not as just it is as a commitment but not as an obligation then it is taken very lightly by the uh, by the state so we feel uh, so we we face you know encounter lots of environmental challenges so uh, if you talk about means in unia also well, we have uh, when you talk about the engagement we have different uh, major groups so there is the major group of indigenous peoples uh, 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 indigenous peoples major group and if you talk about the youth specific and there is children and youth uh, major group there is women major group there is farmers major group the, uh, and trade and unions uh, major group science and business so there are nine different major groups and they have their own issues but the issue of this environmental defenders environmental protection this comes as as in common agenda of all we uh, all we uh, major groups women children and uh, youth farmers indigenous peoples so we always together to raise our issues and represent the cases of human rights violations you know uh, uh, happen at indigenous peoples and other environmental defenders and you uh, that's the good uh, platform where we reach all these things and because of that uh, intervention because of that advocacy from different major groups including indigenous peoples uh, unia adopted environmental defenders policy and and in 2019 last year unia also produced uh, its uh, its its one it's one report global report on environmental rule of law and you know the environmental rule of law means it comes paris agreement it comes cbt convention it uh, 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 it comes uh, our uh, our unrip uh, uh, it comes uh, you know means ilo convention 169 i mean all those prevailing laws which which speak uh, which stand and ensure uh, uh, at the uh, you know means right of indigenous peoples it comes in the environmental rule of law because indigenous peoples they are uh, inherently connected related you know means with the uh, relation with uh, uh, you know means uh, with the nature of uh, I mean, means in the uh, in the love of nature with with the environment. So yeah, so such opportunities are also come means uh, uh, can be explored in CBD Cove. Of, of course, uh, Lakwaji has already highlighted and Human also highlighted climate Cove. 
and at the same time a uh, high level political forum uh, relating to sdg that's also very important forum where lots of environmental issues uh, lots of you know means the issues relating to uh, climate change and cutting you know the affecting to women right violations you know means taking place so all these things come uh, in uh, sdg uh, 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 global platform in high level political forum as well as in asia pacific level it's called uh, yeah asia pacific regional uh, forum of, of the sdg so all these are the opportunities uh, where we can engage ourselves and do the advocacy and there is also another opportunity when you raise all these issue you know in all these forums then there are the member states <laughs> you know means our country is there you know means uh, nepal government india government you know means bangladesh thailand you know means all, all means all state parties are there and that's the good opportunity to share our you know means the uh, uh, our issues and and draw their attention as well as also uh recommend them that or uh, or what uh, how you can say means demand that it should not happen we talk about uh free prior and inform consent you know all these things are written in unrip and they uh, uh and and the state they have uh, they have accepted it they have uh, 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 ratified unrip so it's their commitment uh, to you know means uh, uh, endorse those 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 international commitments and provisions into their national legislations and implement in their uh, national domain to you know means in 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 their uh, national legal frame and to protect and promote the rights of indigenous peoples as well as protection and promotion of healthy environment for for the uh, for the nations and their citizens so all these things are really very broad so thank you very much for the question if anything i'll come back again and our colleague uh, pirawan she might have something so she will continue oh charu is also here we'll join um, about the okay i have more about. questions for the other two uh, speakers um so um for uh, pirawan um uh, it is said that women and girls are disproportionately affected by climate change in many cases i've seen that climate discussion are conducted uh, in you want, you, want, you wanted to say something Hello, hello. Yeah, 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 we are hearing. Uh yes, a uh, question for Pira one first and then question for you, brother. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um uh so it is said that women and girls are disproportionately affected by climate change. In many cases, I have seen that climate discussion are conducted gender blindly. In such cases, how we can explore the gender perspective in the climate action and engage more women and girls from indigenous community. Yes, thank you, P. We have three minutes for that. Wow, okay, that's really smart. Um, just giving the view of our, our work first as APP, um, under enrollment program, we do our way, uh, make sure that we will have women representative when engaging, not only uh, limit to the climate change, but also uh, biodiversity, no? And also the UNEP, that you can see our representative are uh, women. But of course, the youth and girl are in the community level still have the gap there. So that's why we need the network, no? Of of course, one channel with the youth network where we can engage the youth and the girl in the processes. No? And also in the part of indigenous women, we also have a network of indigenous women in Asia where our young girl and also our indigenous sister can engage. This is where the platform we can get the how say the voices of our young generation as well as the women, indigenous women, through this platform, integrated to the uh, APP work, no? So you can engage with us through different platform, this platform that available, and we also have indigenous knowledge network where you also can follow and engage. Uh, Sometimes you may not be physical represent, but you always can, uh, how to say, communicate with the, writing email or sending kind of like message to our staff or to the network no that are the open floor that we giving to you and just don't limit yourself only thinking about international level there are local level uh, country level where there are space no that you have to engage but first of all you have to uh, how to say uh know what is really happening in your country level because there are so many policy and law that is happening in your country level that you can engage and you don't have to really to be the expert to know about the climate change cbd but but you have to know that this is your right 
not to participate in those processes and making the space for yourself for not only as the youth or women but as a person as well no? to engage what is happening in in your country level local level and alone you cannot work no? that's why we said you have to come up together and collective voice that can make really uh, request for the space and get to that of course it's not easy but slowly you can create a space at the international level we also said not like suddenly you can be having the space and voice but because the work of the Sinan people from different region no, not only asia but because the collective work of indigenous people together that's why slowly we can getting our voices our message into those policy level so it's the same thing in the local level get together understanding uh, your contact level because each country you have different uh, how to say uh, situation but our have a common issue so the strategy that you have in each country level you have to, uh, to say uh, analyze now your country contact and then see where is really the you can get and i think you mong you are so as i mean we have you mong as a you representative as well no those who are you are here you also can communicate with you mong and isa and anis no to get the you more to be on board no and we are, if we are open to listen to more the you and we will try to bring those who are not how to say heard to be heard no so this is our role at the secretary level not to bring everyone on board no yeah thank you Thanks very much, Pete. So may I invite uh, Charuda? Uh, so you have two questions. The first question is for those countries who are outside uh, your 14 member countries, then it means that they cannot join. Uh, does it mean that they cannot join the platform? That is the first question. And the other question is, um, so we often see that young people are left behind in national and international climate change related programs and capacity building. What are the upcoming programs of AIYP in 2020-2021 to engage young indigenous peoples in Asia? Yes, brother, you have three minutes. Thank you. Yeah, so comes to the first questions. Yeah, so uh, definitely in the collaborations and in the work. So out of the 14 countries definitely youth will be engaged but uh, if i talk about the the uh, the, uh, the executive council member uh, the, so the only the, the from the 14 countries the, the we, we, we consider this is the, our limitation actually because we work through our member organizations uh, but the, in terms of works definitely the the out of the 14 countries also will be engaged that you can have an opportunity to be engaged in the in, in the work of SCI indigenous youth platform so just as example if i refer the the, uh, the name of the organization here yeah, the SCI indigenous people young network that is the led by the isa and also anis other yeah so i think that in in their youth networks uh, not not only uh, limited the the 14 countries also out of the 14 countries there is also member but the SCI indigenous youth platforms they also work uh, in collaborations with, with, with the Asia Indigenous People Young Network, uh, we, we work together with, with, with the two organizations. So if, 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 if not the member of Asia Indigenous Youth Platform, but the if member of Asia Indigenous People's Young Network, so it's still, it's still there is a chance for, the, for those youth uh, to be engaged in the work of Asia Indigenous uh, Youth Platform. So that is the first, first answer of the first questions here. Yeah? And second, yeah, the uh, I think the first question that the asked by Dennis, I, uh, I think I don't know from which country, uh, as I, I saw the in in, in the in the in the, uh, the in the message. So the second one, I think the Kolpona, uh, 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 she's from uh, Nepal. Uh, uh, yes, I really uh, realize it. Uh, you always that behind actually the. Uh, to be engaged in different uh, area of the works for the indigenous people. And then last year also, when we are going to establish a SCI indigenous youth platform, that issue also came. Uh, and even the last week when we are having meeting, yeah, uh, Iumon, Aisha, Anis, and the AIPP team. So that issue also came. So from the SCI, we find very less number of uh, youth participants in the global process. So that is the thing we want actually to increase. So uh, that is the reason the SCI Indigenous Youth Platform has been established uh, in, uh, uh, in AIPP. So 
yeah definitely this year actually we had a lots of program for the youths but the uh because of the COVID, so we needed everything the uh, the the postpones all the activities but then uh and but the some <coughs> activities related to youths already we have agreements with nefin in nepal i think uh, if you know about the nefin so you can you can also talk to the nefin the, the authority uh, so there is a the one activities that is that we call the uh, community organizing and leadership training. So, but the, now they uh, they, uh, they they will not implement that community organizing and leadership training. So, in the name of the youth came uh, these activities they will they will implement. Uh, so they will have a uh, youth leadership came. Uh, so uh, now now because of covid i don't know this year they will be able or not to implement this youth leadership game but the only the mu done and also with we, we transfer fund in, in uh, into the account of napin so there will be the one youth, youth youth activities so if you want to be engaged then you can you can communicate with napin and also uh, our limitation is that actually we we work through our member organization there is also wife in the the youth organ and uh, youth organization in nepal which is now I, I think that the president is now the mr hamanto rai and also the uh, secretary general is hamanto rai and press chairperson is the gs guru so uh, actually this year uh, they had a plan uh, to organize the, uh, the 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 general assembly of oifin and also there is an agreement that uh, to support from eipp uh so uh, but the, now the, this program also is postponed now they cannot hold so yeah there is also program but the next year yeah, coming lots of lots of lots of activities at the regional level at the country level yeah definitely you will uh, you can follow our uh, the your platform uh, the the facebook page yeah so there is a time limit sometimes i will stop here <laughs> okay thank you very much yeah. thank you very much charuda yeah. Uh, yeah. thank you um so um so we are sorry that we were not able to answer all of your questions due to our time limitation, but we'll try to answer your questions in um, via email if you have any more questions. Uh, so now we are we will go to the most interesting session for all of us. Now you have listened for about two hours, so now it's time for the participants to speak, and um, each of us. All of you are assigned to different groups. We are going into three different breakout groups and you will have specific questions for uh, each group and your facilitator will present your question and uh, lead that. And we have uh, 40 minutes, 40 minutes for uh, the, okay, thank you, Esa. Uh, we have 40 minutes for the break, breakout group, but uh, we will start with 30 minutes first. Okay, we are starting the breakout group in five minutes and then after that, you after you discuss within your own group, then we'll come back into this plenary and then there will be a sharing back session. And after that, there will be a summarizing and then closing and uh, way forward also. Um, so, uh, we have three questions to answer. So for group one and three, uh, you have two questions. Your questions are what are indigenous youth doing in terms of climate change adaptation? And the other one is which accessible and inclusive platforms would you recommend to be used to connect youth at your local country and global level? allowing them to share ideas on how to accelerate climate adaptation action. That is for group one and three. And for group two, uh, you are supposed to answer two questions. What are indigenous youth doing in terms of climate change adaptation? And the other question is, what types of learning materials and youth tailored education content on climate adaptation which you most would be most helpful to develop your understanding and that of your peers to climate change adaptation. So uh, you will be directed into a breakout group session. Enjoy your discussion. And then uh, after that, 
uh, we will meet again in this plenary. Thank you very much. Hello, Chimmy Serpa, Sudana, the Karis, Sony Rai, Kripa, no, Decor Roma Gadinola. Anis, can you put me in the breakout room? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assigning you. Okay. Chimmy, please go to the breakout room, please. Sony, you also please go to the breakout room.
हेलो 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 सॉरी फ्रॉम म्यामर बिकॉज़ ऑफ आवर इंटरनेट कनेक्शन ओह या इट्स टोटली फाइन กันทุกกันตลาดว่ากันตลาดว่าหนูเขามากันรูปบอลค่ะรถตาฮัลโหลฮัลโหลเฮลโหลเฮลโหลไฮไม่แน่ใจว่าที่อื่นไปเลยคือ 5.15 ในไทยแลนด์โอเคโอเคโอเคเดี๋ยวคุณมีอย่างเดียวกาแฟเบรกโอ้ยะอันต้องเป็นดินเนอร์เบรกแล้วใช่ไหมดินเนอร์เบรก Coming. Huh? Coffee break. <laughs> no coffee today. Coffee break. No coffee here. So ten people. Okay, so what? It's back. We're waiting for group two. Ah. Oh. Okay. Are they with Anish? Yes. I see the one who is speaking longest. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can listen to me. <laughs> no, no, I said. <laughs> I thought it stops automatically if the time is up. I think the time wasn't um, set up or it wasn't activated or something. We'll just wait for uh, group two, everyone, and then we can report immediately and then our closing.
So do we have everyone? Um, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, hope you enjoyed your breakout group sessions. And there were also a few who had to leave because of uh, some connection problems, but this is the usual thing for uh, webinars. So, um, but don't worry because we, we are going to have a report back session. So we're gonna hear all the main discussion points from each group uh, now. So uh, you still have a chance to listen to what people have discussed. Um, so uh, do we have group three here with us? Uh, yes, I'll be the one reporting <laughs> for okay. group three. Yes, so uh, Isa, can you please uh, start sharing us? Let's go like three, two, one. Okay, yeah, so uh, presented is our group discussion. So on the question of what are indigenous youth doing in terms of climate change adaptation? So uh, our group were composed from uh, mostly from Nepal and then from Myanmar. So um, organic farming, giving training and transfer of indigenous knowledge to especially of the youth. So um, this is uh, by uh, this is Sudarshan's work on the ground, and then most some have mentioned like there is lack still of statistics research on climate change issues in their own govern in their own country. So whenever they would want to seek like information from the government, it's either it's lacking or they the government themselves do not have the specific statistics or research on that. So I think it's already the efforts of indigenous people organization uh, doing that and then on the second question on which accessible and inclusive platforms would you recommend to be used to connect youth at your local country and global level allowing them to share ideas on how to accelerate climate adaptation action so in the local of course it's important to have like the physical um, or the face-to-face -face discussions or forums they have also made mention of podcast radio radio programs, uh, use of televisions, and then the cultural performances, um, and also promoting local products for the sustainability of uh, different communities. And then also conduct workshop in communities, may it be in learning or uh, in community schools and universities on the SDGs, uh, especially on the fundamental rights of indigenous peoples and also the transfer of our traditional knowledge from elders to youth or even from the youth themselves. And another is like to have like an on online application. This was shared by us by Sister Anchal, uh, like the Walkman Green Coins app. So they have like um, uh, made this application. Um, this is uh, the use of uh, this app to reduce the carbon emission by promoting people to walk or run rather than using vehicles. So another one is, of course, we, uh, as indigenous youth, we are now in uh, the 21st century where we use technology. So we may share our local stories and local knowledge through our different social media platforms. And then in the country, of course, um, it's happening now, uh, the webinars and also the physical meetings, uh, may it be with your organization or uh, with your government. And then the regional, um, to have like capacity building of different regional indigenous youth platforms, such as the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform, or also the AIPEN. And then uh, at the global level, of course, uh, since social media is still uh, the very, I think the fastest way to have like information dissemination. So through Facebook or Instagram, also YouTube and also making infographic videos. And a reminder that uh, there should be gender equality in all of this one. So I think that is all on my end on and on our group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for very, very informative. And you have brought out a number of points uh, th that we can take into action. Um, so thank you, group three. And may I invite group two? 
uh, Brother Anish for presentation. Uh, I think I ha um, from group two, Prem Singh Tharud, I will present because he was the one taking the notes. So yeah, I was facilitating. Uh, so Prem Dai, floor is yours. Please share some of the insights from group two. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am back again. Hello. Uh, okay, so thanks for the opportunity again. Opportunity always remaining, centering to Prem Singh Tharu. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, so uh, yeah, from the discussion, the first question means there were two questions assigned to group two. And in our group, uh, there were uh, Jennifer and uh, what's the name? Anyway. I don't want to waste time in taking oh, means uh, pronouncing name. So means the colleague from Myanmar and Nepal were there, and uh, uh, from from the discussion in the group, it came out means what are indigenous youth doing in terms of climate change, uh, climate adaptation. So they say means the discussion from this it came out means we are changing our behaviors like carrying one bottle, avoiding the plastics, and educating to others on climate change and and uh, protecting forest land and resources collecting plastic and non-degradable waste and learning and promoting indigenous knowledge and practices relating to environmental protection. Indigenous culture cultures have lots of climate adaptation practices which and mitigation practices which we youth are learning from our elders. And we are planting trees and organizing mobilization of youths on different occasions which are also contributing to good practices of climate adaptation and mitigation. And we are raising voices and doing advocacy at local and national level to participate, uh, to, means in participation of youths and also adaptation of the uh, indigenous, uh, uh, indigenous uh, measures of uh, climate uh, mitigations. And we are trying to promote best practices which are going to bring to climate change. So that what uh, we youths are doing in, uh, uh, in uh, different opportunities and we are preserving our traditional foods and taking care of our food system also that's also part of uh, adaptation and what we, we youth are doing but all these things we are doing collectively and non collectively both and we are also proposing policy uh, change means uh, the policy should be uh, formulated uh, to protect our uh, resources to respect our cultural practices which are really environment friendly and are uh, contributing to mitigate the environmental challenges like means the climate change and all so yeah and there are many youth organizations uh, actively doing it and we are also part of that uh, but sometimes mm, some but sometimes uh, we not go as an organization but we go as a youth and do what means we feel as our responsibility to do as as uh, the uh, responsible generations and we also burn the uh, means we also try to stop if there are some you know means uh, pollutions happening in our surroundings we also raise the uh, voice and we also try to make people understand that such kinds of practices you know means pollute the environment and that uh, that 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 help to climate change so we always try to stop such kinds of uh, uh, activities which are really challenging to environment and to you know means promoting to climate change and also we advocate with the government you know means equal participation of indigenous and participation in other development activities where we can share our ideas as well as we learn and the third question was the third question was what type of learning materials and youth tailor education content and climate change adaptation would be best would be most helpful to develop your understanding that of your peers to climate change and adaptation uh, question three, there was not much uh, discussion, but yeah, but it came, what came out from the group discussion was, means uh, in a school curriculum, you know, means uh, it should be, uh, the, uh, the school curriculum should uh, include uh, the education relating to climate change, relating to adaptation and mitigation. And also the opportunity, if we say, means uh, learning uh, materials, if you take, means these days, uh, the gadgets are being, you know, means social medias are being uh, the learning materials, you know, means uh, being the source of learning materials. So the post in the social medias, uh, sharing different, you know, videos, quotes, or articles, or different kinds of uh, what's called informations, posts, uh, those are also uh, good learning materials. 
as well as educating the children from school to college level also can be another uh, uh, opportunity to learn about all these things and uh, yeah and another thing focusing is we are also means you were saying means we're also focusing to policy change and we are promoting to ndc uh, nationally uh, determine contributions and we are also focusing to means when there is discussion on NDC or if there is any discussion relating to policy change or uh, means, you know, in climate change, then we also focus there is need of a consultation with indigenous youth. Uh, so it's not only at the national level, it should be both national and local. So our participation should be there. If there is any discussion on learning materials, it's being, you know, produced, then we can also contribute. So, yeah, and, and also there was, some good practices uh what comes as education means we don't see as an education but it is really means good education what we uh, we see in the practice uh in 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 most of the places if it rains people they store the raining water and they use uh, for different purposes so that's also the good practice you know means utilization of water and uh, okay uh so yeah means we are we're using that and and that means you know if we see these practices in our home those are also the educations means we don't see as education but those are really the educations and they say we use the waste uh, of vegetables you know means came out from uh, come out from our kitchen and we make that uh, waste uh, for the means we we change that waste into fertilizer that's also the education so there are many such educations that we can't see you know means as education but those are the really great educations in uh, climate uh, uh, adaptation and mitigation thank you sorry for long no no not long uh, thank you very much uh, premji and group two for such insightful points we have a lot to carry to the um to our way forward <laughs> So, um, so for group one, uh, we had participants from Pakistan, from Nepal, uh, from Myanmar, and from Malaysia. Uh, so, what we discussed most uh, was the exist uh, on question number one: What are indigenous youths doing in their own communities? Uh, we are seeing that indigenous youths are very much active in awareness raising regarding waste management and uh, reduce, reuse and recycle plastic um, and uh, for promoting biodynamic farming, organic farming and training indigenous youths uh, to become uh, local farmers uh, using uh, organic uh, farming, sustainable farming. And also there are in, uh, different indigenous organizations working at different levels, uh, mainly working on indigenous people's rights. Uh, so uh, especially during this COVID period, uh, there has been a number of consultations going on uh, virtually on climate action about youth participation. So we are quite uh, th there is a big variety among uh, the different types of uh, activities that indigenous youths are leading in different countries. Um, so for the question two, uh, what kind of inclusive platforms do we want to see? Uh, so uh, climate change problems uh, in many indigenous communities uh, from our participating organizations, communities, uh, people still don't believe in climate change and it really exists and it's really happening. So uh, there is still a, a lot to do for awareness raising uh, at different levels, uh, especially for community level. And, um, but uh, there are also cases where uh, participants are thanking COVID because this has given uh, time and space for indigenous youths to focus back, to come back to community for farming, because uh, they are realizing that uh, community farming, uh, indigenous ways of farming is most sustainable. Uh, so uh, in terms of platform that uh, we, 
group one would like to suggest, it's mainly social media platform that we can use for different levels, also for local level, uh, regional level and the global level. So when we say social media platforms, uh, we can use social media platforms for uh, for a, a wide variety of uh, activities, including uh, capacity building, uh, such as virtual trainings, webinars for indigenous youths regarding climate change and adaptation. And also we can use those platforms for sharing and exchange. So usually uh, the, so the, we are in the new normal, so we can use this uh, face, uh, social media platform to adjust our new normal life to uh, not only for daily life, but also for uh, capacity building for indigenous youths to be uh, more engaging in these different processes. Uh, so, and, and the other uh, suggestions include uh, like using visual and audio uh, materials uh, like tutorial videos for uh, making environmental friendly products and uh, recycling uh, things, uh, materials uh, that are uh, within our house or uh, things which we can easily find in our community for uh, recycling. Uh, so one very important suggestion was that uh, it's really important for us to start engaging kids in these discussions uh, because uh, uh, kids, once they are convinced, then they can uh, grow up bringing all these and uh, all these good ideas and practices, and they can be more innovative. So we need to be more innovative in approaching kids uh, so that they can be interested in these kind of discussions also from their very early years of life. And uh, the other one is that uh, to apply effectively existing uh, indigenous youths which are at the local level or uh, some indigenous youth organizations already networks already at the national level or at the regional level, uh, including the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform and uh, Young Asia Indigenous uh, uh, Youth Network, uh, people, uh, Young Asia Indigenous Peoples Network. So uh, it's really important that we uh, mainstream climate change into the discussions and the work streams of existing uh, youth organizations and uh, networks. Um, and the last but not the least is that uh, we need a specific uh, funding program for indigenous youth led uh, climate change action activities. Uh, so these are the, dis the discussions uh, that we had um, in uh, group one. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, so we are coming to the last part uh, of our of the whole program so uh, before closing we would really like to thank each and everyone who has made efforts to uh, to make this uh, sharing session possible uh, we uh, we are a number of organizations working together to make this uh, this sharing session possible uh, able to happen. Uh, so we thank our colleagues and team members from AIPP uh, for their support throughout the process. And uh, we thank Global Indigenous Youth Caucus uh, for uh, the initiative and uh, Asia, in Asia Young Indigenous Peoples Network, Chin Human Rights Organization, and Youth for Environment Education and Development Foundation from Nepal. So we really thank everyone for your contributions. And especially we would like to thank the participants for taking your time to join us and showing your interest and also for sharing us your very insightful uh, inputs for uh, the way forward. And uh, I would like to inform you that all your in contributions and inputs will be collated and, and then will be carried to the next uh, upcoming uh, Indigenous Youth Consultation, Global Indigenous Youth Consultation to be led by uh, Global Center of uh, Adaptation. So we also would like to invite all of you to participate in that uh, consultation because uh, Asia is the, the region with the biggest indigenous population. 
uh, we are about uh, three more than half and about three quarters of the whole indigenous people's population of the world so we also need to show our strength there uh, that we are really active in our region and uh, youth indigenous youth from asia are very much active and very much engaged we also would like to show there and uh, and make our contributions uh, to the global level. Uh, and even if you cannot participate, then we will still carry your inputs from this session to that uh, consultation and all the way to the summit on um, climate change adaptation. And we will send the sign in uh, registration information for that global, uh, the GCA led uh, global indigenous youth consultation uh, very soon, maybe tomorrow. Uh, alongside the discussion points from today, uh, collecting all the discussions from the three different groups. Um, so uh, again, thank you very much for taking your time. And as we started a bit late, we also ended a bit late. So uh, uh, thank you for your kind understanding and for your patience and for your active participation throughout the discussion. And thank you everyone and looking forward to engaging with you more in the future also. And please uh, like the Facebook page of AIPP, the Facebook page of CHRO, the Facebook page of IEPAN, uh, YFIT, so, so that uh, we can keep you posted on upcoming activities and information. So thank you very much and have a great evening all. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.